This is Twit. Hey folks, I'm Ant Pruitt. And what do you get your favorite tech geek that has everything? A Club Twit gift subscription, of course. Twit podcasts keep them informed and entertained with the most relevant tech news podcasts available. With a Club Twit subscription, they get access to all of our podcasts ad free. They also get access to our members only discord, access to exclusive outtakes behind the scenes and special content such as AMAs, which I just love hosting. Plus exclusive shows such as hands on Mac, hands on Windows and the untitled Linux show. Purchase your geeks gift at twit.tv slash club twit and it will thank you every day. You may have seen a series of photos uh, from your friends, your family, whomever, uh, that are, they, they have uh, a look and feel that is reminiscent of a photograph, but is a sort of illustration or uh, some sort of graphic rendering of the person. And if you zoom in, in some cases, you can tell that things are a little odd or off. Earlobes are strange. Um, mm earrings if they're wearing them are odd uh, eyes in some cases are a little weird and this is most likely because the photos that you are seeing are from um the from from some sort of uh ai and so we talked about chat ai earlier text-based ai there is also of course uh photo-based ai and we've talked about dolly 2 on the show before um where you could type in all sorts of weird things and get a response but what's happened is as folks have used these systems they have come up with a way to i think perhaps add more interest for folks. And that is by having the lens get turned in on the person who's using it uh, through the use of individualized models. So as you know, or may know, uh, thanks to ChatGPT earlier, those large language models are trained on huge, vast swaths of text data. And these photo models are trained on, these photo systems are trained on large, huge, vast swaths of photographs. And those make up what then is used by the model to create a new photograph. But what you can do is create a customized model that is based on your own face and then use that to generate photos of you. And it is a very complicated process to make this happen. You have to, in fact, I don't even know the full extent of how it's done. I am uh, blessed to be pals with Anthony Nielsen, um, who was, who in working on the uh, holiday card this year had generated some models of different folks at Twit. And so he sent me my model, which I was then able to upload into the system that I was using on my computer uh, to then make it happen. And even still, it was like black box stuff. I don't know exactly what I was doing uh, to create some photos that were okay, but not that cool. Luckily, there is a company, it's called Lensa, or the, the company's not called Lensa, but the, the app is called Lensa, uh, made by the folks at Prisma Labs um, that has automated a lot of this process. So there's a there's an app called Lensa, and when you download it, it's been around for a while, and it has always had the ability to take a photo and use AI to make adjustments to the photo. It could recognize the foreground from the background, so you could change the background to clouds or something like that instead of your dirty, uh, I don't know, living room. Um, it could... Uh, make adjustments to your face where you're, you can make your eyes smaller or bigger. You could uh, change the size and shape of your nose. You could uh, have your eyebrows be on fleek if they weren't on fleek in real life, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. What they added later was this feature called magic avatars. And magic avatars are actually a uh, tool that essentially does this very thing. It creates a model of an AI model of you and then outputs some images using this AI model. Now, what's fascinating here is that this is uh, done using a, a tool that a lot of AI folks are familiar with, and it's the one that I was using with Anthony's model called Stable Diffusion. 
So Lensa uses a uses that machine learning model called stable diffusion in the background, and it takes in the photos that you give it and then creates uh, what it you know what what it creates. And I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. That sounds vague, but you're going to see some images of me uh, using this that will help kind of clarify things. So um, when you go into the app, you choose the magic avatar section, and then you are asked to upload between to pick between 10 and 20 photos. And you are meant to pick photos that only you are in and that are cropped to where most of the frame is your face. And you are, they actually do not want photo shoot photos. So you can't just, you know, sit in front of a camera and do this and uh, upload those. It will actually say, nope, that, that doesn't follow the guidelines. Um, it says no photos of children. It says um, th there are quite a few different guidelines that you have to follow. And, and so anyway, I was going through and I accidentally selected two photos that were side by side where one was kind of forward and it was almost like an action shot. And it actually kicked that other photo out and said, no, you can't use that one. So mm -hmm. it even has some AI in the upload process. But anyway, once it's uploaded to uh, AI's to, or rather to Lens's uh, server that it spins up temporarily, it will then um, feed it some prompts. We don't know what those prompts exactly are. Uh, and then once it feeds those prompts into the system, then it will spit out some photos for you. So I've included a link in the show notes, uh, John, if you could pull open that Dropbox. It has uh, a bunch of photos in it. And these are the photos that it generated um, for me. So I uploaded, I think, 12 um, of my own photos into the system. And then it, uh, it sort of spun and spun and spun. And I think it took about an hour and it came back with these photos. Now, some of them are res like resemble me. Uh, I can definitely see myself in some of those. It does them in uh, anime style as well. So that one's kind of funny. Uh, there's an astronaut kind of version of me. That is a photo right there that I really like and I have uh, as my avatar in many places because it actually does look like me. Um, and so I liked that one. Uh, but let's keep mm -hmm. clicking. There's one. We'll go past this one. Um, keep going. It, that's kind of one that's weird. This, yeah. So if you zoom in, um, if that's possible, I don't know if Dropbox lets you. Um, the eyes get a little strange on this one. Um, and you, the pupils aren't exactly right. Uh, this is supposed to be like a rock star prompt of some sort. Uh, but let's keep going you, until you come across, John, one where it's kind of the whole body of the person. And you can tell almost immediately that it's pretty bizarre. Um, so these, yeah, these all still kind of look like me, vaguely resemble me. But we're about to come across some that are just very strange. And it's clear that the system, <laughs> well, there's one, <laughs> uh, sort of Borg style. I've got this okay. uh, robot head coming out of me. There, there. Zoom in on the face on that one. This is the first one where I thought, oh, okay, this is weird. <laughs> um, so it has kind of created, I mean, it's a, it's a style for sure. It's an art style. Yeah. Um, and if you knew me, then you could maybe know that that was me. Um, <clears throat> but there's one where I think I'm, I'm actually shown on a phone screen and it is, um, yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're getting near there. Uh, it's about five to 10 after this one. Uh, there's me with a big brain and a big forehead there. Um, that one is hilarious to me uh, because it seems to have, I don't know how, but maybe gathered some from the photos that I posted. Maybe I had one where I had a phone in my hand or I had some sort of tech in my hand, but a lot of these <laughs> feel very techy, which is kind of fun. Yeah, but they the do. Face is, sci -fi. The face is right. Sci-fi. Yeah. That's a good way to put yeah. it. Uh, the face is very weird, but um, in any case, this is uh, a lot that's of fun. Yeah, that one's weird a little bit. Um, it's yeah. a lot of, though, no, yeah, zoom in on the face on that one. That, this is a great example of how it just sometimes gets the face wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so you, this is the point, obviously. It is a, um, it's a, it's a, it's a fun system that is using AI, obviously, to try and make photos that resemble the model that it gets and creates. And, 
there's been some conversation, um, obviously, about it. Uh, first of all, you do pay uh, to get these avatars anywhere between three and I think uh, it can be up to twenty dollars if you end up uh getting like the most that you possibly can a hundred of them or something like that which i did not do um and it is using a free to use uh ai machine learning model stable diffusion to do this so folks kind of were going okay so i'm paying this company money for a system that is free for them to use why is that? Well, let's think about this. First of all, you've got the app uh, and the developers who make the app who put together this system where it's smart enough to recognize what images would be good for the training model, which ones would not, and figure out everything in between. So there's cost associated there. And then there's cost associated with the way this process works, because essentially what's happening is it is spinning up a little instance in the cloud where the stable diffusion machine learning model and your custom uh, model come together to then process those images. And folks, that stuff gets very pricey very quick. So that is where the cost comes in. And it's funny because I have obviously, I do a show called iOS Today. For years, I've been, it's been so important to me that um, folks understand the value that developers, the app developers bring to apps. And I see constantly people who aren't steeped in tech, who don't understand how the process works. They gripe and groan about spending any kind of money on an app. I have to spend 99 mm -hmm. cents on an app I'm gonna use for the rest of my life? Ridiculous. And mm -hmm. so this has been the first time in a long time where I've seen people actually considering spending money or in some cases spending the money on it. And of course, still griping and complaining about it. This is not a, an inexpensive thing to do. It costs a good amount of money to, uh, to do all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Uh, but along with this comes, and, and I'll, we'll wrap it up after this, I just wanted to point out there has been some kind of uh, concern and blowback from different uh, groups, as there is with everything, but in particular, I think some reasonable concerns here, um, where it does, uh, as you might imagine, reflect bias that humanity has uh, because it is being trained on data from humanity, uh, then it's going to reflect some of that bias. And so uh, you may see uh, women who you know go through the system, it is trained toward a particular body type and a particular um, sort of resemblance. And uh, for people of color like myself, um, it I didn't notice it much for me, but darker people, uh, people with, uh, with deep, dark skin, it tends to lighten them in all of the responses that come out again, which makes sense given the, uh, the AI model and how many of those photos are, uh, from systems that have already sort of had that bias in place. And then there's the concern that because this was trained on art and photographs and all sorts of things that were created by artists that were then published online, that it is devaluing artists' work. And I, there's a lot of complicated you know, thoughts about all of this. I just wanted to provide kind of the basic overview of how folks feel about this. Um, and you can chew on those, you know, those, those, salient points and decide which which you feel are valid or which are not valid in your mind uh but just that you're aware of them i think is important and i did want to last thing i'll say is a, a kind of neat thing um there was a, a trans individual who uh sort of put out a tweet and said hey something that's been really cool with using lensa if you take a bunch of your photos when you were a teenager and you choose those and you upload them to uh lensa as you upload, it asks you some questions, including uh, your gender. And so you can choose your gender, which in this case, uh, the gender that the person wanted to put in was female. And it took the photos of them as a teenager and it presented them as a female. And for them, that was a very, you know, sort of 
heartwarming and, and, and positive experience because hmm. they could then kind of look back on the history and see themselves as they see themselves. And I think that's a really neat uh, possible use for this, this system. So yeah, um, in the meantime though, I know I've had fun and uh, so has my partner had fun uh, creating some avatars as well and uh, laughing at the goofy ones and enjoying the ones that actually end up looking like us. So I'm excited to see yours, Jason, whenever you're done processing. I've noticed that it's slowed down over time. Yeah, apparently. I think I I think I filed mine away uh, or, you know, uploaded the photos probably like a week and a half ago at this point. Wait, what? I received anything. Yeah. I don't know if it's Lenza. I can't, I'm honestly, I can't remember what the, what the service was. It was in the news a couple of weeks ago and I was like, and it was on one of Leo's shows. So I was like, okay, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, actually, huh. no, no, no. You know what it was? It was, uh, Mike Elgin had written an article about one of them. And, uh, so I'll have to look it up. Yeah. Mm. I was just, as, as I was listening to you, I was like checking out my inbox. Like, did it just, did I just accidentally archive it away? You know, like maybe I didn't realize that it was the results or whatever, but yeah, I still don't have them, but I'm, I'm curious. Mm. I mean, even the images that don't look exactly like you or, or somebody else, it's, you know, like if an artist was drawing you, they would, it wouldn't look exactly, exactly like you. It would be an interpretation anyway. of you. So, yeah. Yeah. It's an interpretation. I mean, even if it doesn't look exactly like, they're still pretty amazing pictures. Um, one of the, you know, part of the pushback, I just saw this article on, on NBC news. That's, you know, that's focusing on, on, uh, the signature like the signature yeah. that, that accompanies art and how some of that is translating over and how people are like, okay, you want to say that this isn't ripping off to artists, but yet here we are in the corner, there's the mangled remnants of what used to be a signature there. So, you know, so I guess, yeah. And that's a tough I, one I mean, because don't about that. you don't, you never know uh, how many of those are uh, because the system is looking at a bajillion D photos. And if yeah. in, 900, 9 million of them, there is a signature in the bottom right corner, then it's going to think that that's a thing that shows up in painted photographs. But yeah, for all true. we know, those are photos yeah. that Nanamimi sold to a thrift store and that are appearing in the thrift store database online just as much as they are, you know, but, and the whole point, okay, see, I said I wasn't going to get into this, but I, I, I want artists to have their work valued. And I think there's a difference between if I were to use this system and then take the photos that I made with it and try to sell them to people, that's where I would draw the line. But for me to just have a photo or nine photos of myself that I think are fun, or for yeah. me to like give this, cause I, you know, my mom's not someone who is, is really a person who pays for apps. She, you know, doesn't, really know how all that works anyway. But it's so like, as a gift, give her some AI generated portraits that she could have for fun. Mm -hmm. That's not, that in that way is not um, devaluing, I feel, uh, the large scope of, of artists because it's just a personal thing as opposed to being a thing where you are then making right. money off of somebody else's stuff. So 